But we must never forget that no government schemes are going to perfect man. We know that living in this world means dealing with what philosophers would call the phenomenology of evil, or as theologians would put it, the doctrine of sin. There is sin and evil in the world, and we're enjoined by Scripture and the Lord Jesus to oppose it with all our might. Coming to you live from the corner of Fauci and Burks on Constitution on Fire Avenue, it's the America Held Hostage Podcast. America's Constitution in Quarantine. Now here are your hosts, Jeff Dornick and John Hinton. Hey everybody, welcome to today's episode of America Held Hostage Podcast. This is uh, episode number 15, so this is our third full week and uh, we are totally, uh, you know, it's it's been it's been nuts. This uh, this lockdown that we've all been on, uh, pretty much across the country. Uh, I feel like at a certain point, we uh, I don't th- I don't think any of us really ever expected something like this to happen in our lifetimes. This was something that was only supposed to be happening in like an apocalyptic movie. I think so. Um, it, it's just absolutely insane. Uh, so we'll get to the news here in just one second. Just wanted to quickly remind you, um, you know, we have our uh, plugged in membership here for anybody who is interested in what we're doing here at the GK. Uh, you can go to gatekeepersonline.com slash plugged in. Check that out. Uh, you'll get exclusive access to uh, our Destroy Social Justice Conference. You'll get access to uh, you know our weekly devotional. Uh, you'll get thirty uh, percent off in the GK store. A lot of a lot of really cool perks that are included in there. Ten bucks a month is all it is to be a member of Plugged In. So definitely check that out. A lot of cool things. We're going to be rolling a lot more uh, you know benefits within there uh, within the membership here really shortly. So uh, you know let's go ahead and um, and get going with kicking things off. We've got a lot of news to cover in a short amount of time, but John, I feel like, you know, today's one of those, today's one of those days where it's like, we're kind of like looking back at the week still, I mean, we're still catching up on the news, but, th- but at the same time, there's always so much new happening, especially with the presser yesterday and all that kind of stuff. So, um, by all means, John, take it away. Uh, we may not get to very much of the news because uh, I woke up to see what to see my Twitter account was exploding. I kid you, did you not this morning, Jeff, with 100 notifications, and I only have 790 followers. So that means that about one eighth of my followers had had either lost or agreed with with something that I said on my Twitter account. It had to do with the president's press conference yesterday. The president yesterday said in his press conference that these uh, that these social distancing measures and uh, possible rolling lockdowns would have to continue through the summer into the f- and possibly into the fall and longer. To which, to which I tell, no. We have data from we have data from Stanford. If you haven't done it, go to YouTube. Look up Steve Dace's interview with Dr. Scott Adams. He is the head of Stanford Medical. And he did a 20-minute interview with him. And Dr. Scott Adams is pleading with the White House to end, end, end the, because the data does not, does not support the draconian means that we have taken. He says that he doesn't have anything good to say about Fauci. I'm going to say, he just totally ignored the question. Had Burks did not support what it is that we're doing. But what I got notifications for 
and this is probably what we're going to stay on for probably uh, the half, is I got a notification from a hundred different people for me saying, President Trump lost my vote yesterday. I was never Trump before in 2016, just out of just out of principle. But then I came out three years of seeing him troll pagans and actually get stuff done. So when I decided I was, I was on the MAGA train. But now, after yesterday's press conference, I'm at square one with that poop show yesterday. What I wanted to add to that, and I know this is going to be controversial for people that see this in the American conservative movement, for people that see this on the GK Podcast Network, but we're no I'm no respecter of persons. I'm going to look at the facts and the data, and we need to be people of truth, and the truth is this. I loved what Jesse Kelly on Twitter had to say in his show, show first network on show yesterday, and then I'm going to quote from him, because this is a series. This is a series of tweets that he then posted and used on his show as a warning to the White House, and this is a huge MAGA supporter, but you can also see it on Twitter. There have, there have been over 100 now Steve Dace is saying that he has people that are huge Trump supporters that they're over this now too, and that they're issuing a warning to the president, we need, we need to get back to work or you're going to have more to worry about than, uh, than just these lockdowns. You're going to lose our votes. Jesse Kelly said, for those who convince themselves that our wrecked economy is some leftist plot, here you go. After yesterday's press avail, it's not. Much of it sucks. Trump is now showing that he's been 100% behind these lockdowns, and that's simply a fact. For better or worse, he owns a lot of where we, of where we are. You can get mad at me all you want. I voted for him. I'll vote for him again. But you cannot absolutely absolve him of responsibility for causing this economic disaster. Maybe he does know more. Maybe he's been right all along. But 30 million unemployed, unfortunately, he owns it. People are scared to get yelled at. Well, I'm not. They also think that their silence is helpful. If you're a Trump supporter, like I am, now is the time that he needs to hear your disagreement. You're not a better, better supporter if you agree with everything. You're a cultist and a chump. He's not getting it from all sides. The only people wanting to open are the unemployed and about 10 pundits on the right. Virtually everyone else is, is telling, telling him to keep it locked down. I have been out of work, and I care about the 30 million people who can't pay their bills and don't have a voice. Trump voters were the silent majority the last time because we live in a shame society, and many didn't want to admit that they were voting for him. I'm telling you all right now, the new silent majority of people is now furious with these lockdowns. You should see my emails. The very thought of this makes me throw up in my mouth. I want four more years of what Trump has done, but only 70,000 votes in four battleground states were the reason that you don't have a President Hillary. And if you think that 30 million unemployed people doesn't risk those 70,000 flipping sides or just simply not voting, you're a moron. Now that's strong language from Jesse Kelly. But I would add, he won my vote after three years of lies. But after seeing my wife be unemployed for almost 40 days, and now we're getting data that shows this was all much ado about nothing, that the fatality rate is going to be lower than it was. We now know yesterday, Governor Andrew Cuomo admitted that the New York Department of Health is now finding data that one out of every five New Yorkers has had the coronavirus already in New York City. So the antibody rate is higher than previously thought, which means the fatality rate is lower than what's been previously reported. But we're going to continue these social distancing measures. We're going to continue the face masks. We're going to continue the gloves. 
or we're going to continue that you can't go see your grandparents or your parents or your friends or go to the park or go for a drive, or go back to church and worship freely, or if you're like Mindy Robinson in Nevada and you're running for a uh, for a primary, they're going to ban you on Twitter just because of a meme, because everything is now hate speech, everything now goes against the Twitter rules, everything is just it's a dystopian 1984 totalitarian regime, and Trump has the power to stop it, but now he's saying, no, I'm going to allow it. And then we get a report that he was for Georgia Governor Brian Kemp, saying that, you know what, we're going to go back to work this weekend. And then he comes out and says six hours later, well, I disagree with him going back to work this weekend and opening Georgia up, but he's got to do what's right. Well, if he's doing what's right for his for state, why does it bother you? And why did you have to open your mouth? So, yeah, I'm frustrated because I'm over it, Jeff. And if he has lost my vote after he won my vote over and I'm just willing just to wash my hands of it, Pontius Pilate, and I'll abstain at this point, he's going to have to re-earn my vote. The only way he can do that now is ending these draconian lockdowns and getting people back to work immediately and staring down the leftist panic porn hype machine that has blown this out of proportion. But until he does that, not only has he lost me, he's losing his own MAGA supporters that have been huge allies of the president. Jesse Kelly is just one of them. Yeah. Well, you know, I feel I feel like for me, like I, I'm I'm looking at this and I'm in, you know, and I, I th yesterday was like the first uh, the first press conference that I didn't really uh, that I didn't watch because I, I had some phone calls and meetings and things like that that were going on. Um, but, you know, the the question I was kind of asking you before we went live um, and maybe we can talk about it, too, was when when Trump was saying, you know, keeping up, uh, you know, like the, you know, the the rules that are in place and things like that for, you know, through the summer into the fall, that sort of thing. Was he talking about um, like social distancing and the sense of wearing masks and staying six feet away and that sort of thing? Or was he or was he talking about the, the lockdowns? And again, I'm, I'm asking because I didn't see the press conference. Um, but do you, do you know the context of what he was talking about there? He was talking about rolling lockdowns in various places if there were increases, but also social distancing measuring as well. And he would say those those lockdowns and measures could roll, roll into the fall. And that was after a DHS admitted that their studies are showing that the virus lives for 90 minutes inside a climate-controlled facility. It lives for 90 seconds outside. And they were saying people need to go outdoors and get into direct sunlight. And then he directly contradicted that. Uh, for instance, and I'm thinking, what is going on? What is going on? So, yeah, it was very frustrating to watch because – uh, I, I don't want leftist pagan ideology. I don't want abortion on demand. I don't want uh, tranny bathrooms. I don't want gay marriage. I don't want want Democrats in power where we're going to give five five hundred million to Planned Parenthood and we're going to abort as many children as we want on the altar of choice and call it freedom. I don't want any of that. But I also also don't want my, my constitutional liberties and my way of life taken from me as well. And he has the power to stop all of this. And we're continuing to – I think we're continuing to double down on the dumb because the data supports that. So that's why I was very, very frustrated after that moment out that this is a lot like SARS in 2002 were you're floating that this is going to continue on through the summer? Uh, why? For what reason? Yeah. Well, I I feel I feel like for me it's like you know because because again 
the timing of this is like leading right up to, right up to the right up to the election right and, and the way the way that I kind of look at it is obviously we we need to critique and criticize you know we, you know call balls and strikes we, we need to be looking at okay what's constitutional what's not constitutional um, and, and I think that one of the one of the things with uh, with Trump is that the thing that I've been appreciative of is that he hasn't come in as king what he's come in as with is recommendations to local states now we can, we can disagree with his recommendations we can disagree with with the advice that he's getting and things along those lines um but the a lot of these lockdowns and shutdowns are um are directly coming from the the uh, governors mayors uh that sort of thing in 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 from my perspective, I'm lo I'm looking at the 2020 election, and I'm looking at okay, so we could we could either have Joe Biden or whoever they replace him with, Hillary, Michelle Obama, Gavin Newsom, you know, whatever it is, where they would take the things that we don't like about Trump multiplied by a hundred, and then plus they'd be abortion on demand, plus they'd be uh, higher taxes. Plus, they 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 would be a lot a lot stricter, and they would actually be implementing a lot of these lockdowns on a on a federal level, not just on state and local levels and that sort of thing. Um, I you know from my perspective, I think with uh, with Trump, we disagree we disagree on on the advice he's getting. We disagree on what he's implementing, but at, but at the same time, I I would take Trump's response to all of this than I would Gavin Newsom. As I'm living out here in California, and my theory is that I think that they're going to put him up for for the nomination for the Democrats uh, and replace Biden with him. Um, I I would in a heartbeat take Trump's response to all of this over somebody like Gavin Newsom or Cuomo or you know somebody like that. So that's just kind of like how I'm looking at it. Doesn't justify maybe Trump, you know, being wrong on some of these issues. With that said, um, from my end, I'm kind of taking a step back and I'm looking at the bigger picture, and it's kind of like, you know. When, when, when push comes to shove at the election, I would I would take Dr Trump's response over Gavin Newsom's. Well, Gavin Newsom has uh, done more of a lockdown. I mean, he locked down the entire state blanket order. Uh, and like I said, I know that what I'm saying is controversial because a lot of people uh, a lot of people are going to buy into a. Uh, a lesser of two evils uh, argument, and uh, I, I I reject that on the premise. I have for four years. I have I have that for I have for twelve uh, on the simple fact that um, scripture scripture doesn't support that. Do we keep on sinning so that good may come? Absolutely not, is what Paul says. Um, uh, do we keep on sinning so that grace may abound? Um, not that I'm saying that that vote is your sin. Uh, you can vote however you want. Um, that's a choice between you and God. Uh, my principles say that if my vote is my voice, then uh, if you agree with uh, long term with what you think is right, then you need to vote your conscience. But right now, uh, Trump is going to have to earn my vote. And I think that there is a growing swell of people in the grassroots that would have voted for him, that did vote for him, that he has now run out of time. Because we're gonna, this is gonna be, it's gonna be, it's gonna be easy now. We were led to believe that if we shut, that if we went with these lockdowns for 15 days to slow the spread, and then we expanded it to 30 days until May 1st, that if we hunkered down for two to six weeks, and we got past this, that then we could open back the economy, we could get back to our natural way of life and our God-given liberties, and we could all have a summer and get back to normal. Now we're finding out there's cracks in the armor. This is going to be a long rebuild. And now people in the fall are going to be voting, I think, because of the, social, the socioeconomic carnage. And Trump has shown... That when he's out with the public, he listens. He's a sponge. Whoever he's around with, whoever he's around for long periods of time, is who he gets info from. But if you've noticed over the last six weeks, he hasn't been around the people. He's been stuck in the beltway. And the people need to make their voice heard. 
but I'm not sure that that message is actually getting through because his only lifeline to the people is Twitter. There's no regular folks that are talking to him. The people that are talking to him now are people in the Beltway, Jeff. They're never going to lose their job. They're, they're talking heads that are in the media. They're talking heads that are in government. They're experts that will always get a government check. They're experts that are billionaires that want to figure out ways to keep essential businesses alive and kicking. Well, here's the thing. All work is essential. If you provide for your family with your own hands, with your own sweat of your brow, with your skills, that's essential work. Try convincing my wife who's been uh, – who is – been out of work for the last 40 days that cutting hair isn't essential when it's put food on her table and paid her bills for the last 17 dang years try telling that to you jeff you lost a job as well try telling that to me i lost a job as well now yeah we're, we're enjoying building a podcast network and 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 trying to become entrepreneurs in our own right but at the end of the day there are going to be a lot more people that are thinking and I'm just being honest. There's going to be a lot more people that aren't as conservative as I am that they're going to give Trump the, the benefit of the doubt. He's lost my vote, but you can earn it back if you stop this. And I'll vote for him gladly if he does it in the next week. But the thing is, is at this point right now, he's lost my vote. But there's going to be a lot more people that aren't going to be thinking that clearly. They're going to be thinking this. I lost my job, and I just want to go to my way of life back. I, I just want to go back to my way of life. I want uh, my relative freedom. So if that, that means that I have to – that uh, if I vote for the Democrat, I get that because that's how this is going to be framed in the fall. You can have your way of life back if you vote for the Democrat. Sadly, a lot of lemmings are going to do that because we have lo a low information voter mentality in this country. And uh, that is appalling. I think it's absolutely appalling that that is where we are, that basically the media is going to frame this as if you vote for a Democrat, we can give you your way of life back. There's no guarantee your way of life's ever coming back, whether you vote for a Democrat or vote for Trump. The the thing is, is that if we want freedom, we've got to stand up for it no matter what, and we've got to call a spade a spade a spade. And what I saw in that press conference yesterday wasn't standing for freedom and liberty. It was standing for a draconian America that is the antithesis of what our founders fought, bled, and died for. Yeah, now, now so, so I, I was just looking at the comments over on, over on Facebook, and uh, it was an interesting question. Um, and I think I think it'd be good, you know, for you to be kind of be able to articulate it, you know, because I know you were kind of touching on it a minute ago. But Lisa Elizabeth was asking, John, we will never have that perfection of, you know, like the perfect candidate, you know, running for president and that sort of thing. Isn't it better that he is fighting for pro-life than him not agreeing with Georgia? Um, and, and, you know, wanted to give you kind of the opportunity to re respond to that question. So the question being... Uh, if he's pro-life, isn't that better than him uh, agreeing with Georgia? I say that we should have our cake and eat it too. I reject false binary choices on the premise that um, we serve a uh, we serve a God that uh, yes he puts he allows us to choose life and death. Therefore, choose life that it may go well with you. It says, choose this day whom you will serve. But the thing is, is that in Exodus, he talks about how you choose leaders. Uh, Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, tells Moses, this is too much for you. Therefore, find men who can be judges over the people of fifties, of tens, of thousands, and they must have four qualities. They must fear God. They must be honorable men who hate bribes and will uh, do what is right in the Lord's sight. Now, I'm paraphrasing. I'll have to find the verse. But the thing is, is that 
when I see that type of mentality, we haven't been using that type of standard to pick our candidates for the last 30 years. So now we've bought into a mentality that our parents told us, well, we have to vote for the lesser of two evils. And I still say, okay, well, that's still voting for evil. It's not about us lowering our standards to support a candidate. It's, it's those candidates coming to our standard and supporting our way of life. I've always thought that the conservative movement, Jeff, should be this. When it comes to Christian constitu- Christians, constitutionalists, conservatives, we should be, be like the NRA. We're for the Second Amendment. If you support the Second Amendment, we'll support you. But if you don't, we'll do everything in our power to defeat you. Our movement should do the same thing. You support freedom. You support limited government. You support uh, personal autonomy. You support the Bill of Rights. You support freedom of speech, freedom of worship, freedom of the press, freedom to assemble, the Second Amendment. And if you do, you have our vote. You start to intrude on that, you don't get our vote. Why should I have to lower my standards when ultimately they are the ones that report to us, we the people? We're the boss of them. That's how I would say that. I'd turn the argument on the premise. They, I'm not accountable to them, and I don't have to lower my standards. They're accountable to me, and they have to raise, raise their standards to our principles. But if we don't redefine that type of thinking... We are going to buy into a paradigm in our culture and in politics that over the last 30 years has shown it's been many, many tekel parson, weighed, measured, and found wanting. Is the culture more or less pagan, Jeff? Do we have more or less government? Do we have more or less abortions? Do we have more or less divorce? Do we have more or less welfare? Do we have more or less debt? Do we have more or less milk toast Republicans that have sold you out every two to four years? Because they haven't bought into your principles. They've bought into talking points to get you to, to vote for them. And then they've sold you out. And they've sold out your seat at the table because they don't care about you. I think the answer is clear. If you want an American conservative movement, you can't be totally beholden to, we'll always vote Republican. You need to say, no, these people have to support our principles no matter what. We are their boss. If they don't, we cannot support them because they're working against us. But then again, my opinion in and two dollars will get the Philadelphia court. Yeah, well, you know, I, I and I think that that that'll kind of you know like lead us in because you know because I know that you know I've I've got to run here pr- pretty quickly and that sort of thing and we're coming up to nine thirty so uh, let's let's let you kind of have your your final word your your closing comments that sort of thing I'll come in with, with my closing comments and on a little story uh, that I wanted to touch on and then uh, we'll we'll kind of wrap up but you know you can kind of continue along that route if you'd like but you know wanted to give you the opportunity to uh, have your closing your closing thoughts. My closing thought is uh, what the Babylon Bee said yesterday. So not only is this our funny, it's also my commentary for the day. Babylon Bee, I love them. They said, government accidentally shuts itself down with a ban on essential services. If if only that was was the case. I love this story so much that I uh, I want to read here. But Babylon B saying yesterday that government sh- accidentally shuts itself down after it describes itself as a non-essential business. Had 1.5 million shares yesterday. Congress has asked not all non-essential essential businesses to limit their hours or close entirely for an undetermined amount of time. But this shutdown mistakenly shut down the most non-essential entity of all, your U.S. government. For a brief period of time, all of the United States government is considered legal, since it's completely essential to everything. And to Senator McConnell, oops, we meant non-essential private businesses. Of course, the government is always, always essential, even 
anything to help you or is actually making things worse for you. Senators, congresspeople, and bureaucrats frantically rewrote the ban to include only businesses that actually produced something and not government agencies that just watched other people make stuff. Though they had dragged their feet on passing bills related to relieving the financial distress, they passed this revision in record time, almost as quickly as they vote for pay raises themselves. According to Speaker Nancy Pelosi, she said she would have caught the mistake but, uh, but had to pass the ban in a ban in a hurry, saying we had to pass the ban to see what it did. And I say bravo. Yeah. That's my thought for the day. Perfect, perfect. Yeah, that – that is pretty funny. Um, I, I wanted to close with the story uh, that, that was breaking last night. Uh, so Mindy Robinson, who's been on my podcast, Conversations with Jeff, um, and then she uh, she also spoke at the uh, Saving America conference that the American Conservative Movement put on uh, last week. Um, she uh, she posted a meme about uh, talking uh, that was making fun of Joe Biden, and it was like a fake uh, ad that was basically saying, you know, uh, it, essentially it's not about my brain, it's about my heart. Um, you know, obviously poking fun at at Joe Biden and all of his gaffes and and that sort of thing. Uh, Twitter decided to ban her for, I believe, 30 days for posting that meme, um, which, again, it's very tame, poking fun at, at, a, at a public, you know, uh, public person, somebody in the, in the public light, that sort of thing, gets her banned for 30 days. And you got to remember, she's running for Congress in the state of Nevada. Um, and so she, they're two weeks away from, uh, from mail-in voting, and then they're leading up to the, into the primary. Like, this is something that should not be happening. Not only should it not be happening with anybody, but especially somebody who's running for Congress, uh, to have Twitter come in and ban them for something as minor as posting a meme of that tame nature is just astounding. And then uh, she was t she texted me this morning and was telling me that she was trying to run at, at, she was trying to run ads on Facebook. And Facebook won't let her run ads um, promoting her her campaign. I mean, this is a problem with big government, or not only big government, but, but big companies, big corporations that have so much control and so, and so much power that they can literally dictate what people are allowed to say in the public light. Like, this is something that uh, sh th these, these companies should be treated as publishers, not platforms, because they are literally going in and editing. They are literally going in and censoring people. Um, and taking away their ability to communicate with the world, especially when we're in, especially when we're in lockdown, especially when we're in shutdown, these social media platforms are our only ability to actually communicate with each other. On um, especially when we're dealing with uh, election season and things like that. So this is definitely something that we need to keep an eye on. Uh, censoring is getting worse and worse and worse as we're going along, especially as we're dealing with uh, with conservatives. Um, they're going to be trying to censor people leading into this election to be able to dictate uh, who's going to be able to get the word out, who's not going to be able to get the word out. So we definitely need to be aware of it. We definitely need to uh, make our voices heard, but we also need to be uh, keeping in contact with those that we support that are running for Congress, running for office, that sort of thing. Make sure that we are really promoting people with conservative principles and constitutional principles. So I uh, just wanted to bring you guys, uh, make you guys aware of that. There's the hashtag um, uh, free Mindy on Twitter. Uh, if anybody wants to post uh, in support, um, if you go to my Twitter, I posted a video by uh, by Mindy that that's uh, on my pinned uh, tweet on my page. Check that out. Uh, retweet that with the hashtag free Mindy. Again, it's just to kind of get the word out about this kind of censoring because it's, it's vitally, vitally important that we really promote freedom of speech and it's something that we really need here in this country so that that was my closing thought and kind of closing story and that sort of thing so uh jeff uh wanted to close with this um six hundred thousand people according to the wall street journal what's that number it's the number of people that are expected to die because we have said that non-essential elective surgeries cannot be done in America. That's the cost that's going to happen between now and the end of the year because of our coronavirus shutdown. We've aborted also 
uh, we're continuing to keep the baby mills open. So if you take 40 days times 3,000 babies a day, then you're looking at, I believe, 120,000 babies have continued to be aborted in this country. Um, these are health concerns no one's talking about. But yet, we're at 50,000. And that's even flip those numbers too. This has to stop. It has to stop. And it needs to stop now. Email President Trump, call the White House uh, telephone line, and make your voice heard. Tweet him and take your country back, America. Take your country back. Uh, Jeff, you had an announcement to make uh, about the podcast. Yeah, so uh, so basically today's my last day on the on the uh, day to day uh, episodes of America Health Hostage podcast. Um, been crazy slammed as we're trying to uh, build up the American conservative movement, uh, getting the GK podcast going, few other a uh, few other uh, projects that we're working on as well. Um, but uh, John's going to keep this show going. I know he's going to be having some different guests on to kind of help you know commentate on the uh, on the news and keep up with all of that as well. So American Held Hostage podcast still coming to you guys on on a daily basis Monday through Friday bringing you guys the news. Um, I'm just not going to be on it on a daily basis. I'll still pop in every now and then with, uh, you know, as like a, you know, guest co-host every now and then and, you know, come back and, you know, we can discuss the news more and what's going on. Um, but make sure that you guys are, are checking uh, this podcast out. Uh, you know, it's going up on iTunes, YouTube, Spotify, like all, all the platforms. Like, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. It totally helps. Uh, on iTunes, we're actually having individual feeds for each show now. So you can actually go in and you can subscribe specifically to the America Held Hostage podcast. So definitely do that. That way you guys are getting notified whenever a new show comes out. Uh, you know, this information is vitally, vitally important, especially because a lot of the stuff that we cover here is stuff that a lot of the mainstream media either doesn't cover or they're kind of twisting or manipulating. So that's why having a show like this is so vitally important. So definitely check that out. We're still going to have the same content. We're still going to have the same news and commentary. We're just going to have guest contributors every day, and it's going to be rolling. So you may see two or three different people throughout the week. But, Jeff, uh, we look forward to seeing you back with us as a, hopefully a weekly or a biweekly contributor moving forward. And, uh, yeah, America Held Hostage will continue on Monday. So for Jeff Dornick, I'm John Hinton. He's at Jeff the GK. I'm at J Hinton underscore, and we will see you Monday. Episode, Hostage Podcast.